Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Allstate Insurance, Jared Mayo of Martin, Tennessee. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Zach, before we talk to our very, very special guest today, uh, can you share something you have discovered at Discovery Park of America? So I went to the Roosevelt cabin a couple of days ago and discovered the new Pioneers of Conservation rifle we have from the Boone and Crockett Club. In, in the cabin, we unveiled it at the David Crockett birthday celebration. I uh, just now got to look at it, though, and that, that thing is a beauty, and it really takes Duck Duck Goose up to another level. Yeah, I um, love the gun. Um, it's uh, really cool looking, and it has David Crockett and Daniel Boone engraved on it. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Boone and Crockett Club is something that a lot of people listening might not know about. Um, but it's a conservation um, organization that was actually founded by Theodore Roosevelt. Um, and they advocate for, I just looked them up online, they advocate for science, conservation, and hunting. So it's really, really interesting the work that they do. Um, and I am fascinated by Theodore Roosevelt and what he did for conservation. And so um, I'm really excited to have that addition in the cabin that we have um, over there. So uh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Our guest today is uh, fantastic. I cannot wait to talk to him. It's Cole Biswell, who is our very first fourth generation tow boater. Welcome, Cole. Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? Fantastic. Okay, Cole. So I love the Mississippi River. I love history. I know you do too. So we're going to talk a little bit about your work um, as a senior deckhand with the Ingram Barge Company. But first, we want to back it up and we want to hear more about where you came from and where you grew up. All right. So I'm from a little itty bitty town called Reeves, Tennessee. It's right below Union City, if anybody knows where that's at. Um, <clears throat> growing up, you know, uh, apart from the occasional flood, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot exciting in Reeves, but it's a, it's a quiet small town. I had some had some good buddies that I grew up with. Um, I went to Obion County Central High School. I was in the band. Oh, what'd um, you play? I played tenor saxophone. That's nice. Zach, were you in the band? I was not in the band. I, I thought you were. Played I, played the, I played the trombone. Okay. Okay, carry on. Nice. I'm sorry. I got distracted from um, the band. Oh, no, no, you're, you're good. <laughs> um, just grew up with mom and dad. Uh, Pretty, pretty peaceful life, you know. And you uh, went for a while to UT Martin, I know. And then you uh, just from watching your uh, videos and the stuff you share on social media, I know that you worked for the local airport here for a while. Um, That's right. You were going down and uh, you were going down the airport path. What happened to get you on a boat instead of an airplane? Well, uh it's a kind of a long story, but uh, COVID happened and people stopped flying for a while. So that kind of killed the uh, aerospace for me. Um, after that, I was kind of at a crossroads with my life and I was I needed to do better. So um, I've got a lot of generations in my family that was out in the river industry. So I figured if it works for them, it may work for me. So I sent my application out there and... Uh, I applied to Ingram Barge Company and Marquette. And, uh, of course, this originally started as a joke. Uh, I was actually at a bar with my buddies. I said, hey, what if I, uh, what if I went to go work on a tow boat? You know, everybody kind of laughed, but, uh, I kept thinking about it. And, uh, so I sent my application in and, uh, about a week and a half went by and, I did something out of the ordinary that I don't normally do. Uh, I went actually to where my great granddad was, was buried. He used to be a captain. And uh, I said, I want to be like you someday. And I kid you not, the very next day, uh, Ingram Barge Company called me with an, with a interview and hired me right on the spot. That's, that's incredible. 
So what um, kind of questions do they ask you? Because you clearly don't have any experience on a barge. So what kind of questions are they asking you to figure out if you would be a good fit for their organization? Well, they want to know your your physical capabilities. They want to know how much you weigh. They want to know if you're going to be potentially injured, like if you have a, a, a previous injury that can be aggravated. Um, they want to know your, uh, I guess, your, your background history. They do a, a background check on you. Um, if you don't have a TWIT card already, they will provide you with one. What does that stand for? Transportation Worker Identification Card. And Excellent. it's it's required required by law pretty much to be on a, uh, I guess, merchant vessel or something along those lines. You, you obviously that. answered the questions really well. This was how long ago? <laughs> how long ago was this when this transpired? Uh, this was in uh, June and July of 22. So see, so obviously it's working out. Um, what? What do you remember about, you know, it's really interesting that your great grandfather and your grandfather worked on uh, barges and on the river. What was your first exposure to boat boats like the tugboats and, and the huge body of water known as the Mississippi? So my first exposure was probably when I was five or six. Um, of course we had a, my family had a, a company. It was called Mays Towing Company. We had probably nine or 10 boats. Um, but we, we closed up shop in 2006. And before that, my granddad wanted me to step foot and see our tow boats, you know? Um, so we went out there to Cape Girardeau, Missouri and, uh, which is on the upper Mississippi river. And we had two boats there. I think it was the Edward C. Mays, which was named after my great granddad. And the Captain Zach, I believe, which was actually named after a family dog. Uh, and I, we got to step on them. And for a five year old kid, I mean, I just barely remember it, but man, it was cool. It really was. And when I was thinking of something to do in the future, when I was at that crossroads, I thought back and I was like, man, that was, that was really something, you know. Yeah, I I was in a similar boat, air quotes, um, in that my grandfather would come from Brownsville, Tennessee to Memphis, where I was living, and he would pick me up, just me, and we would go downtown. He loved downtown. He loved the river. Um, mm -hmm. And so I associate those times with being a little kid as well, you know, and from that point on, I have loved the Mississippi River. So um, I've driven across it on both bridges you know, hundreds of times, probably thousands of times, uh, traveling, uh, being from, from Memphis and living in Midtown. And then, uh, you know, I have so many personal stories associated with the river. My in-laws, uh, my wife's, uh, mother and father lived on, uh, founder lived at Founders Point, which is on the river. And at Christmas time, we would stay up there and watch the boats. A lot of times they're decorated for, uh, oh yeah Christmas and and you who know well it's it's some of the people that you work with now might have been on those boats back then uh <laughs> going going up and down the river and then used to in college here's one more of my stories and i'm going to shut up and let you talk um, <laughs> no you're good we um there used to be a rope that hung off of the old mississippi bridge and when i was in college we would go under the mississippi river bridge and swing out over um over the rocks and stuff. So anyway, wow. I, only did it a, I only did it a couple of times, but I think that's no longer there. But um, so, so you kind of fell in love with uh, uh, the river and river life and seeds were planted. Um, what, what do you, when you show up to work on the boat for the first time, how long did you, how long did you show up? what you take with you? How did you even know what you're, you know, what you were supposed to be doing on the boat? Oh, it was, it, it felt like I was getting shipped off to another country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they told us to pack for potentially up to 45 days away from home. Wow. Um, so really I, I took in my bags, I took a, a week's worth of clothing and, you know, of course, soap, shampoo, all that good stuff. And, uh, 
hope for the best really uh you, you've got to have uh, you, of course you got to have steel toe work boots um they've got a, a policy that that dictates you know it has to be steel toe it has to be at least eight inches high it has to have a defined heel um you bring a week's worth of clothing and you show up to orientation and the first two days of orientation it's it's mostly uh paperwork and policy and after that uh there will be a three or four days maybe where you're packing what's called rigging, which is what you basically wire the barges up together with. And, uh, that's kind of like a, that's, that's the test. Uh, if you can actually physically carry that, um, uh, repeatedly, um, then you should be able to work on the water. And so you show up, you know, is, is there a point? 45 days doing anything, you know, is, can be stressful. Was there a point at which you thought, what am I doing? Or did you love it from the very beginning? As soon as I stepped foot on my first boat, I knew it. I like, I had a blast. (laughs) Uh, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that, uh, for their first trip, you know, they find out pretty quick. They're like, man, why did I come out here? Um, it's, it's a love it or hate it job, but i very vividly remember uh, my first boat was called the Patricia I Hart and uh, it's actually a sister boat to one that my granddad had worked on and uh, I remember the tug picking me up that morning off of the dock and it was like a 45 minute ride up the river and they said hey here's your new boat and I looked out the window and this thing just looks like a floating apartment building I was like oh my gosh um, uh, and I remember stepping inside there, it was Saturday. They already, they were cooking steak. Uh, <laughs> I was like, man, this is crazy. And, uh, I couldn't sleep the whole day. I could not sleep. <laughs> and so what, who, who actually does the cooking on it? Do you cook your own food or, you know, there's not a drive through McDonald's on the Mississippi river. Yeah. Can, where's the food come from? So on the smaller boats, you actually do cook for yourself. Um, but on the bigger boats, there is a dedicated cook most of the time. Um, the boat I'm on right now, we're fortunate enough to have probably one of the best cooks on the river, if not the best. Is that Miss Penny? Miss Penny Stewart. Yep. I've seen that from your social media. (laughs) Oh, she is, she is top notch. Yeah. And Um, and then you you said you were like, you know, really thin you know, has she put any, any pounds on you since she started? Cooking I'm sure for you? she has. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty hard for me to gain weight, but man, I tell you after every meal, my, I kind of look like a pot belly pig for a little bit. <laughs> and so what, what is your, uh, the room like that you sleep in? Do you have like a little bunk, like on a tour bus or do you have like a little, a little apartment or what's that like? That's also boat dependent and it's also rank dependent. Uh, when you start out as a deckhand, generally you have pretty basic rooms. Uh, but as you move up, generally the, the rooms get a little better. Um, but it's also boat dependent. If you're on a smaller boat, the rooms are going to be smaller. Um, my boat, uh, there's no bunk beds. It's all individual beds. Um, my room, I have a full size bed. I have a recliner. Um, I do share a bathroom with the mate on the vessel. Uh, I've got my own sink and, you know, dressers and whatnot. Um, we do have TVs. Do they, do they, how do they connect? Do they work? I mean, the TVs or do you, like yeah, at our they, house, we don't even do turn work. our TVs on anymore. We use our phones. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh you know, we, they, do, uh, they do work. They're connected, I guess, to cable somehow. <laughs> yeah. That there's, there's cables run throughout the boat and it hooks up to a, uh, a satellite receiver on the top. Is it like and a it, cruise same, ship where you where you turn your TV on in the morning and it has like your agenda for the day and what you know? <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. I'll I'll uh, I'll pass that along. Yeah, but. suggest that. Um yeah. and so you you your shifts currently, I believe you said they're like um twelve on, twelve off. Is that right? Yeah, some boats do twelves, uh some boats do sixes, which is called a square watch. And, uh, me personally, I love 12s. Some people say, oh, I can't work 12 hours at once, but I'm telling you, uh, 
once you actually get to sleep for 12 hours or eight hours, it's a lot better. Uh, on a six hour watch, you get off watch, you've still got to eat, you still got to shower. Um, so that kind of cuts an hour and a half off. Um, so 12 hours are the way to go. Um, I can, I can get a full eight hours of sleep in and still hang out and talk to my buddies and everything. So, um, you have a captain, every boat has a captain, I'm guessing who's the boss mm -hmm. of the boat. And, you know, I watch, uh, religiously below deck and the, the TV okay. show, and, but it's, it's not probably not the same thing, but you guys should think about getting a reality show about, I think. Ingram yeah, Barge Company. That. Yeah, write that down and share it with Ingram. I'm trying to come up with a bunch of ideas so they'll send me one of those hats that you have on that says Ingram <laughs> Barge Company. Um, or the t-shirt. The t-shirt. I mean, who who would have known oh, yeah. that a barge company would have such cool swag? Um I know. I uh I get they're they're big on hats. Um it's kind of a little known secret, but if you get into Ingram, uh there's like a a hat collection culture. <laughs> Well, I, I pulled their uh, website up a while ago when we were talking, and they've definitely got it going on when it comes to marketing and promotion um, mm -hmm. and, you know, how they uh, brand themselves. So, uh, well, next time you come to Discovery Park, if you bring me an extra hat, I won't be mad at you. Um, okay. Good extra hats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Zach wants one, too. So, um, so let's talk about what you're looking for on the river, you know, the people who are in the back and the front who are watching, what do you, what are you watching for? So it really, it, it's called a watch, but it, it's really just a uh, boat slang for a shift. Um, but if, if we're just running up and down the river, you're going to be want, basically watching the tow, making sure that the barges don't break apart. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, a tow is just what we call a, an assortment of barges that are put together. And uh, despite it being called a tow boat, we don't actually tow anything. We push everything, but it's called a tow boat because it is pushing a tow of barges. I and, did not uh, know that. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, why don't they call it just a push boat? You know, a push but, boat. That's no. right. And, and what is the, why would a company choose to transport something down the river as opposed to transporting it in a truck or in a train? So there, there's a, a graphic on this somewhere, but uh, for the same amount of fuel burned, we can move an exponentially more amount of cargo uh, versus truck or train. That's very interesting. Um, I I am fascinated by the history of travel up and down the Mississippi River and how, you know, like the location uh, here along the four, uh, the four Chickasaw Bluffs, I think it's called. Memphis is on the fourth Chickasaw Bluff and there's Randolph. And, mm -hmm. um, I guess you probably go up and down the river and, and see all those, but um, yeah. I, I'm fascinated by, they used flat boats originally and how David Crockett went up and down the river in a flat boat and just the history of it all is fascinating. And the fact that you're still seeing those same things, um, that, that they oh, saw yeah. is cool. That that's, what's really interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the industry as a whole has had a lot of, um, improvements and modernizations, but it's still the same thing it was a hundred years ago. We're still doing the same exact thing people were doing a hundred years ago. A lot of times with the same tools, not because that's just what we do, but you know, it's just the best tools for the job, you know? And, uh, yeah, you're, you're seeing the same stuff and that you, that you see in all these stories and it's pretty cool. What about the, the Mississippi River, for those who aren't uh, um, familiar with it, uh, the the level rises and falls pretty significantly. Are there times when you get to the point where you can't go forward? Absolutely. Um, and we're actually we're coming up on that stage river right now. Uh, usually after August until December or so. Uh, the river kind of falls and the last two years, it's been pretty bad. 
Um, I think last year we actually broke the all time record for lowest river stage. And when that happens, there's only so much we can do. We do dra- uh, what's called draft restrictions, which is basically how how low in the water the barge sits. You know, if it's in high water, you know, we may load it down to, you know, 10, 11 feet draft. But if it's low water, I've seen barge restrictions go all the way up to uh, maximum eight foot draft, which is pretty significant. And there's still times when uh, you'll you'll run across a, a really shallow sandbar and, you know, if you're lucky, you know, you can just kind of rub off of it and keep going but sometimes you get stuck sometimes if you're really unlucky you might break some barges off the toe mm. and so then you have to get them again right <laughs> come back right, yeah you basically yeah you got to go chase them down pretty much do you ever uh this is gonna be a dumb question but do you ever jump <laughs> off and go swimming <laughs> no absolutely not Is that we, against uh, the rules that's yes that's very much against the rules um Probably in college, back in, the... in college, I water skied on the Mississippi River one time, <laughs> um, and I water skied um, right past a bloated pig. Ooh! <laughs> so I guess I so I guess it's probably a good idea not to swim in the Mississippi River. Yeah. Well, see, back back in the day, you know, people did that. You know, you'd hear stories of people just jumping off the top of the boat, you know, and but no, you don't want to do that nowadays. Um, Especially, I mean, if you've been out there for any length of time, uh, I don't know if I'd want to swim in the Mississippi River anyway. Yeah, it's um, pretty rough. It's a, there's a lot of current. Uh, it, I mean, it, it's really easy to just sweep you away. Yeah, you can suck you under. The undertow is pretty uh, is pretty mm-hmm. powerful. We're going to take a, a quick break, and when we get back, um, I've got some more things about the Mississippi River I both want to share and ask you about. As an all-state rep in Martin, Jared Mayo's knowledge and understanding of the people in this community and surrounding areas help us provide customers with an outstanding level of service. He helps families like yours protect the things that are important, your family, your home, your car, and more. Jared Mayo serves O'Bion, Weekly, and Gibson Counties. Get your quote today at allstate.com slash Jared Mayo. Our guest today is tow boater Cole Biswell, who's talking to us all about working on a towboat on the Mississippi River. Um, Cole, where do you usually start from and where do you end up? So my boat, we run the lower Mississippi River. Uh, Generally, we start from Columbus, Kentucky, which is where Ingram's fleet is. And we'll run all the way down to either Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or uh, New Orleans. And then... Is it like tubing? The car picks you up and takes you back, or do you? Uh, <laughs> does the boat come back the other direction? Yes, it does. Uh, normally, we push uh, loads, loaded barges southbound and northbound. Uh, it'll be a few loads, but mostly empties. Because it's going the opposite direction, so it takes a lot more fuel. Is that how it works? Absolutely. We may burn, uh, if you look at the fuel burn of the boat, uh, we may burn five or 6,000 gallons of fuel a day southbound. Uh, northbound, you're going to look at probably 10,000 gallons of fuel a day. Wow. Now, I've I've been up and down the Mississippi, Mississippi River, as I mentioned, on a ski boat, on a pair of skis. I've been on a river boat, but I've never been on a tugboat. What does one see? I guess a tugboat probably goes about the same speed as um, a river boat. What do you see as you're, uh, when you have a minute to stop working and look out on the bank in the daytime, what are you seeing going by? Well, most of the time you just see trees. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you see a lot of wildlife. I've seen uh, I've seen lots of deer on the bank. Uh, you see a lot of bald eagles. Um, the sunsets are my favorite. You have probably the most beautiful sunsets just about every day. Now, you're probably I mean, I see your I see a lot of your pictures and your TikTok. you know, is really cool. Mm-hmm. I love the TikTok that you did of your grandfather's uh, ship or boat combined with the boat oh, yeah. set that you taught that you shot that's really cool um are you are, are there other people out there sharing social media who are working on uh tow boats or are you the social media king <laughs> well i actually started because i've got a good buddy in memphis actually that that does that sort of professionally uh, his name is robert doris and he's got a little company called hold my boat 
he doesn't actually work on the boat, but he is the social media king of of uh, towboat footage. And I actually do work out on the boat. Um, and in my off time, I do like to go out probably Tiptonville, New Madrid and uh, film the boats, you know. Yeah, well, it, you're anybody who's interested in this topic needs to uh, search Cole Biswell, and you come up on TikTok. Your TikToks are great. I spend more time on TikTok than anything else, and uh, yeah, uh, really great to see uh, some of this stuff. And I, I don't even know how we ended up connected on social media, but there's <laughs> yeah. only a handful of people whose whose Facebooks or thing tiktoks that i actually say oh i want to watch this but whenever you have one i always want to watch it and we don't even know each other so um yeah. kudos kudos on your social media great work there i really appreciate it i i try to make interesting stuff you know I, it in a way uh, most of the stuff that i post is <clears throat> kind of like a way to document i guess what i do uh, I, I it used to be that i like to make a post about just going over what what the trip has been like, you know. But really, I I just want to show people what it's like out here. Well, and what's interesting is there are, I don't know how many there are, but there can't be that many people who work on towboats on the Mississippi River, a few thousand maybe. Yeah, it's uh, across all the companies. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good number, but. Overall, the the industry is pretty pretty low key. Not a lot of people know about it, and the people that do know about it maybe aren't too familiar with it. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty niche industry, but it's very major. Uh, just considering the the tonnage of of product that we move through America. Well, and for for. Those who don't know, Zach, I'm sure you don't know anything about the Mississippi River. So I have a few facts we can share. Um, what do you know about it? Before I share that, Zach, why don't you share with us your memories? We've been going back and forth. Have you ever, have you ever skied on the Mississippi River or do you have any personal? I've never skied, but I've went on boats with my friends before. Uh, but also speaking of Columbus, back to that, I used to uh, weed eat there in, in my oh, teenage really? years. <laughs> I'm glad I, I asked. <laughs> That's very interesting. The Mississippi River goes through 10 states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Um, we're part of the Mississippi Flyway, which is why we have so many so many waterfowl and birds and um, that fly uh, um, uh, above us and, and uh, stay here. Um, during times like at real foot lake um and so uh the mississippi river is such a key part of everything uh, that we do around here it drains 41 percent of the continental united states and carries more water than any other american river and it provides drinking water i'm assuming it's cleaned first for millions and supports a 12.6 billion dollar shipping industry with in total 35,300 jobs so um, you know, the Mississippi River is a really important part of us. We are also on the Great River Road, Discovery Park is, uh, which is businesses and industries all up and down that are tourism related up and down the, the Mississippi River. So anyway, it's a really important part um, of our culture here in West Tennessee. Um, what is, Cole, last question, what is your favorite memory so far of working on a tugboat my favorite memory oh boy um really uh put you on the spot oh man <laughs> I, i've really i've got a favorite memory from pretty much every boat i've been on um my first boat the first trip that was kind of like magical to me um uh, the second boat i was on it was called the carol mcmanus um uh, not one memory in particular, but we had an excellent crew on that boat and just a lot of good times with the boys over there. And then the new boat that I'm on, uh, it's called, it's actually being renamed right now to the John D. Roberts, who is the president and CEO of Ingram Barge Company. And over the last month, we've been painting and trying to make the boat ready for christening. 
And uh, two days ago, I actually got to meet John Roberts himself. And he is he's a wonderful guy. He's very down to earth. And um, pretty much every trip, I, I have nothing but good memories. That's awesome. What is your vision? What's your long term plan for the Mississippi River business? What do you hope to be doing eventually? Well, I absolutely want to carry on the legacy of my great granddad and my granddad. That's that's first and foremost. It's there's just a a feeling that I get from doing that that I don't get from anything else. Um, we had our own towing company for thirty something years. My great granddad was a captain before that, and he was in World War II before that. And uh, my granddad, same with him, he was he ran the company for a while. I, uh, I'd love to just carry that on. Fantastic. Well, thank you for, for all the great content you're sharing and educating people and helping people discover the Mississippi River and discover that there's still a huge amount of business that's going on up and down the river. And thank you for being on our podcast. Absolutely. It was a pleasure being here with you guys. And thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.